In this, our final deep dive bonus episode for 2023, I asked ANZ's Group Chief Economist, Richard Yetzenger, to sum up the year that was in the global economy and markets and to peer ahead into 2024. 2023, I think, really was a tussle between a range of quite polarising views. Inflation, on the one hand, inflation would stay uh, incredibly entrenched and central banks would have to do a, a whole lot of work to get inflation to come down. And on the other hand, even if they were successful in that, they would probably overcook it and, and cause some serious economic damage. And of course, as we finish the year, both views have had an element of being right. But really, I think when I look to 2024, what strikes me is the range of likely economic outcomes has narrowed quite a lot. We're talking about a landing which looks not too bumpy, inflation approaching targets, some questions about whether it will get all the way there in the first go, whether central banks will have to do a bit more. But really the big kind of, if you like, the wings of the probability, the big existential questions um, are not given as much airplay now. Yeah, one of the debates we had earlier in the year or um, as the Fed was continuing to hike was, is it going to over-hike? And was it being too worried about all the inflation that was around? This argument that you could argue team transition put forward. How does team transition shape up at the moment compared to those who are saying we needed to really, really, really hike and and clamp down on inflation? Well, I don't think team transitory has come out of this looking that flash in all honesty. I mean, um, <laughs> some of them will claim, I told you inflation was going to go away and look, it's coming down um, reasonably solidly. And I agree, it is coming down reasonably solidly in most jurisdictions, except of course, and if I can refer to Larry Summers, who I don't always agree with, although I feel humble disagreeing with a former US Treasury Secretary, but he said, well, the ironic thing is if team transitory have ended up being kind of right in, in inverted commas in the sense that inflation has come down. It's because we completely ignored their policy advice and actually hiked very aggressively when when their advice was to do nothing that inflation would wash through. This is a structural shift, I think, in the inflation environment, the global experience of the last 15 years, this low inflation, this new normal kind of environment, I think that era is over now. And, and I don't think central banks will give up on their target bands, but I think they're going to have to remain vigilant to keep inflation down at target. Towards the end of the year, there was this almost celebration that the soft landing had been achieved, that there wasn't going to be another leg higher in interest rates and uh, everyone could sit back and enjoy another big rally in the bond markets. What's your feeling as we head in towards the end of 2023 and into 2024, whether there's more more to run with that rally or whether they've gotten ahead of themselves? Maybe looking backwards a little bit, just a reminder that history is not destiny. When central banks started to tighten, there was a lot of, look, I think data mining. Every time central bank X has started to move uh, with unemployment this low, it's had a recession. Every time central bank Y has started to tighten with inflation this high, it's had a recession. Every time the Fed has tightened with the yield curve inverted, there's been a recession or 80% of the time there have been a... And all of that is useful analysis, but there's nothing preordained about recessions. Ultimately, central banks have to muck it up. And I think one of the things which made a muck up a low probability is the reality of this cycle. It's been the least credit intensive global upswing in living memory. And I just think that's left demand as the main impact of rate hikes rather than delinquencies. And if it's demand rather than the financial system, I think you're much likely to have something which looks more like a soft landing. And on that basis, I really like the fact central banks are finishing the year in a more patient mood. The Fed's pivot may be, maybe the market's overread how much they have pivoted, but I think the signal that we can afford to sit and wait and see how inflation transpires, see whether we've done enough, I, I think is the right signal. And the bond markets will feed off that for a little while. They have priced in a lot. We, we expect, as a central case, the next easing cycle from the Fed starting from about the middle of next year is about 200 basis points. Some people tell me that sounds like a lot. I just remind you the Fed just hiked more than 500 basis points, so we're taking back less than half of that. And it's a, it's a relatively narrow easing cycle from a historical perspective. The market already has more than that priced, so I think there is ultimately going to be some market disappointment. 
but that's not a pre-Christmas problem, Bernard. It's a 2024 challenge, I think, for the market. And just um, looking at some of the, the specific parts of the global economy and how they link into the Asia Pacific, China really had a year of coming out of COVID and finding itself in the middle of some property market dramas. How is China finishing the year and heading into next year, given its importance to the region? Well, in fact, in Asia, China and Japan are the bookends of the global monetary policy cycle. And and China, as you correctly point out, is dealing with both cyclical challenges and structural challenges. And its its policy stance, in our view, is, is pretty set. It will continue to ease. Interest rates will gradually come down. There will be generally a provision of liquidity and addition of liquidity in the Chinese market as policymakers continue to seek to generate some reasonable sorts of growth without uh, rekindling some of the leverage challenges that have got China to this point. I would point out, even with the focus on the real economy, I would encourage people to focus just as strongly on what nominal GDP is doing. That's a really strong signal about the economy's ability really to generate excess demand. And just uh, moving back to Australasia, Australia had uh, a change of leadership at the Reserve Bank and eventually the end of monetary policy tightening. How is Australia shaping up for next year? Well, I think often the policy debate in Australia at the moment is starting to be dominated more by structural factors than cyclical factors. And I, I say that acknowledging that the cost of living remains an enormous issue in the economy and in in the commentary and it's starting to diminish. Uh, You're starting to see some recovery in consumer sentiment uh, as consumers respond to that, but it's it's unlikely to disappear in its entirety. The investment requirements in the economy, both in the private sector and in the public sector, also are having a substantial influence on the economic debate and the course of the economy. Private investment has been weak for more than a decade and has picked up more recently at the same time as public investment has really an enormous array of potential expenditures to focus on, all of which are clamouring for resources, infrastructure and the climate transition and the ageing economy and housing affordability. And that last issue seems like it's become quite entrenched. It's part of the social fabric. It's it's causing consternation, I think, in a whole range of ways. What would be on your radar for 2024, the events or the uh, factors to just keep an eye on? Central banks are finished. I think that's a a strong piece of um, good news. They're turning their minds now to at least watching and waiting to be sure inflation is coming all the way back to target. And if it doesn't come all the way back to target, They can deliver some more policy action later, but if it does look like it's coming back to target, then you'll start to see some easing. In our view, led by Europe and then the US and the UK, uh, a couple of economies in Asia, and then towards the end of next year, Australia, and then even even later, early 25, maybe um, New Zealand, as the Reserve Bank of New Zealand is likely to stay quite corkish. I, I do feel also that the range of economic outcomes is probably narrowed, and actually where my concern, if you like, is it's easy for an economist to say I'm worried about this and I'm worried about that. The economy, I think, seems to be in reasonable shape and central banks have done a good job. Things like the US fiscal position are something which we should all have on our radars, not just for 2024, but for future years. The social fabric and domestic politics is something, this domestic political environment is something we should have on our list And the third issue is geopolitics and the relationships between countries. You know, all of these areas present quite substantial challenges of their own and it's not clear that they impact policy in a particular way from one period to the next. But as an influence on the business and economic environment, they only seem to be gathering importance. ANZ's Richard Yetzinger there. I'm Bernard Hickey. That was our final five and five with ANZ for 2023. Look out for us next year, starting Monday, January the 15th. Merry Christmas, everyone. Or as we say here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, Merry Kirehimeti, and we wish you all a safe and prosperous new year. This podcast contains general information only, not investment advice. You should obtain advice for your personal circumstances before making any investment decisions. Please view the podcast disclaimer available via your media player or email.